Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial from visualnights.com. In this short tutorial I'm going to teach you um, about the reactor rope modifier in 3ds Max 2010. You can use this tutorial in all the versions of 3D Max as well. The menus, values, they are pretty much all the same. Our end result will look something similar like this. Simple box attached to a very small rope here. And well, it's been flying around the scene here. That's what we're going to do here. So let's get started. We're going to create two boxes. One or a sphere, whatever you want to use. I'm going to use two boxes here. Um, what we need to do here is we're going to create first the reactor objects. First we're going to create a rigid body collection. We already have the first box, now we need to add the second one. We've done that. Now we're going to create a rope collection. A rope collection contains every rope modifier in the scene. What a rope modifier is, I'm going to show you that now. But first we need to uh, draw our rope. Go to splines in shapes and click on line. Now you can apply only those rope modifiers on lines. Now we're going to draw our line, a very simple line here, as you can see. I'm going to place it a little bit more inside the object. Alright. And with this line here selected, I'm going to apply this rope modifier. As you can see, that is now available. Okay, we've done that. Select your rope collection and, well, add this rope here we've just uh, attached to this line. Alright, we've done that. Um, we want this uh, box here. We want to fall. We want to let it fall down. So we're going to give it a mass. Doesn't matter how much you're going to give it. Just pick a value. All right. Um, let's see what happens now. Oh, our rope just keeps falling down until it reaches. Well, I don't know what it reaches actually. What we need to do now is we need to create. Uh, we need to attach the ropes to these two objects here. Select your rope, go to the reactor rope modifier in the modifier, sorry, in the uh, modify section. Click on vertex, and as you can see, we have these two vertices here, the blue vertices. Select one of them and click on attach to rigid body. As you can see, attach to rigid body is being added in this white field here. Select it, click on none. The next thing you need to do is click on the box you want to attach it to. And voila! Before you click away, you need to click on this white field again. What you can see here is that it creates this blue uh, vertice. It's being changed to a uh, yellow vertice. We're going to do the same thing for this blue vertice here. Select it, click on attach to rigid body. Once again, click on none and select your box. Click on the white field, and now this uh, vertice has also been changed to a yellow vertice. If you don't have a yellow vertice, please check again, because otherwise your rope won't function properly. Now let's see what the result is of this. Go play. Whoa, there it goes already. Very nice, very nice. We're actually almost on the end of this tutorial. I'm going to show you some very... I'm going to explain a little bit of those values and properties you can uh, change here. The mass of the rope. The mass of the rope is of course important because when you have a heavier mass, the rope will have a higher friction level when it um, um, how do you say that? reaches another object. Um, with the thickness of the rope, well, it's quite logical, a thicker rope will be created. The friction itself, I've mentioned it before with the mass, a higher friction will resolve in um, uh, when when the rope reaches or touches an object. It will have a uh, it will have a larger effect on how the rope moves. The air resistance the air resistance has a uh, effect on how uh, the rope moves in our space. Let's see what this does with a value of ten. 
the ropes is way more stiff and it, it almost stands still, it doesn't move anymore once you have a very high air resistance. You can com almost compare this with a very high gravity level. Whether you choose spring or constraint depends on what uh, kind of rope you need. With spring I would suggest you use, you use it with a bungee jumper or anything like that. A constraint is more for a a, a, a realistic rope which you can use for a uh, for example a rope bridge which you can which I'll show you in a other video tutorial how you can create a rope bridge now that's actually pretty much it for this tutorial oh one last thing let's say I want to move the original object where the rope is attached to let's say I do that well that doesn't affect our simulation at all the rope is still being attached to that point of the original object. However, if I would move the object where the rope is being attached to, well this affects our rope. Our rope is being stretched more, it's being, uh, the rope is not being independent from this body here, but the, you, you should see like there's from this very black point here, from here on, you, see, you should see an, an invisible line to the box and that line is being, well you can't see that line, but that's what actually happens. So be careful when moving this object away from our line. Okay, I've switched to that different scene with where I built a reactor rope bridge. It's really fun to do, it's really cool. And in that different uh, video tutorial I'm going to show you how you can build this reactor rope bridge. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. It shows very, uh, it shows very short the basics of the rope modifiers inside 3D Max. Well, I hope to see you again, and goodbye.